Hello and welcome. I'm going to be recording this video and talking about Brotato. Pretty much everything you need to know if you're just starting out playing the game. All, all about the danger difficulty levels, all about the materials and experience, how that works in the game, and also all about the enemy monsters and their names, you know, what their specialties are, etc. And so to start out, we're going to be talking about danger levels here and i do also want to say really quickly i recorded the first part of this series where i teach how to play every single character i recorded the first part for well-rounded before making this video so if you watch that i might be talking about some things which i end up explaining here right but yeah danger levels there are six different danger levels starting from zero and each danger level, subsequent, subsequent danger level, gets the, sorry, we can see here, each level inherits the difficulty increases from level before them. So we start at zero, there's no modifiers, nothing is affected in the game. Danger level one, new enemies appear. I don't know exactly which ones they are because I have not played these low danger levels in a very long time, but yeah, new enemies appear. And then danger level two, again, more new enemies appear. And I think there is a list here if you would like to look at it specifically, but I will say, I think just getting to danger level five and playing at max difficulty is the most fun. Maybe you will enjoy one of these though, more so, and you can go in depth on that on your own. But yeah, so danger level two, more enemies are introduced and we get an elite or horde, which appears for one single round between rounds 11 and 12. Okay, so this is doesn't exist in difficulty one and zero, the sort of mini boss or elite, right? Plus the horde, which is just a ton of like endless monsters spawning and coming at you. And you can see this in my well-rounded video where I play on difficulty five, which has three of these rounds. Yeah, but yeah, danger level three, we get enemies are stronger here. New enemies appear, so more new enemies. And then the same thing, one elite or horde round and then also enemies are stronger so this is where it starts to get fun right so enemies deal 12 percent more damage and have 12 percent more hp so enemies are genuinely just stronger there are more enemies you know mini boss horde etc and they also have better stats and then as we move on we get an elite or horde appears for three rounds so not just on round 11 or 12 but from rounds 11 to 18, you get three separate rounds, which have either an elite or a horde. And then on top of that, enemies get even stronger. So they go from 12% more to 26% more damage and HP. And then as we move on to the final difficulty, my favorite, danger level five, we get the final new enemies appear. All enemies in the game that can appear will appear on danger level five. And then we have the elite or horde appears for three rounds. So this doesn't change. You get three elite or horde rounds between 11 and 18. These waves, the enemies get even stronger again from 26% to 40% more damage and HP. And you also get two bosses spawning for the final wave on round 20. Uh, they do have reduced HP, but this is kind of a trick because... <laughs> Well, as you can see here, enemies deal 40% more damage and have 40% more HP. So this is really just to make sure they don't have even more HP, right? Than they would anyways, because of the enemies are stronger buff. And yeah, we do have a little bit more information here. I think some of it can be useful. Uh, as for example, here, the elites that appear starting from danger two, right? Always drop a legendary crate. That is the red crate. Normal crates are green legendary crate is red and they always contain a random legendary or tier four item and something very important if you're playing on danger level five especially when you pick up the legendary crate you get a hundred hp heal so it's basically a full heal because you usually won't have more than 100 hp but yeah it heals you for 100 hp so this can get you out of a huge dangerous situation if you're really low hp you barely kill the boss and you pick up the crate you can full heal and then moving on, 
Elites have 75% health when spawning during wave 11 or 12. This is just because otherwise a lot of times you don't have enough damage to kill them on the higher difficulties, right? Because they have so much HP already. And then moving on, health and damage increases are the total for that danger level. So at danger 5, enemies have plus 40%, right? Not 12 plus 26 plus 40 as we saw here. You do not add these together. They just have 40% more on the highest difficulty. And then you can see here as well, these increases are additive with the accessibility sliders. So this is here. Generally, I prefer and I recommend people not to touch these. You can go into the settings. You can make your base speed much higher. You can make enemies much lower base speed, give them less HP, etc. But I think the game is pretty well balanced. And doing that, in my opinion, is just going to take the fun out of it. It'll either be too easy or too difficult. Because like I said, the game is balanced around the settings, which are the default settings. So please, if you really want to enjoy the full experience of the game, try to avoid using the sliders, which change the damage, you know, HP, speed, etc. Because they will maybe end up messing with your game experience. But you know, at the end of the day, it's your game to play and have fun. But I will be talking about everything on default difficulty, default settings. Okay. And yeah, so here moving on. If you are playing on danger five on 25% damage, so if you did change the damage, uh, then it would get plus 40% equals 65% damage. And then if you're playing at 200% for whatever reason, if you just really enjoy, um, <laughs> you know, struggling, I, I suppose, I'm not sure. But if you're playing at 200% enemy damage, then it only adds 40% still. So the total would be 240, right? Same with health. 240% health. But like I said, I would recommend not touching those and just playing the game as is. But yeah, that's it for the difficulties. Now moving on to materials, okay? Here we have materials. As we know, these are the little green coins. I like to call them green coins, materials, that drop from the enemies during waves, right? And we can see here, materials are small green objects that are dropped by enemies when they are killed. Harvesting also grants you materials at the end of each wave. And so let's say you have 10 harvesting at the end of the wave, you get 10 of these plus experience, right? Because when you gain materials, you gain both experienced used to level up and gold, the currency which we use to reroll our stat choices and the shop, right? Okay. And then when we're playing the game, we can see this in the top left corner, as we say here. And then within the game, there's no clear distinction between gold materials and gold. They're pretty much you know, interchangeable. You get materials, you're getting XP and vice versa. Okay. And then there are some exceptions to how to gain experience and gold, which can be the pacifist and cryptid. But I will go more into detail on these when I actually play them during the how to play, you know, characters uh, video for these two characters. Yeah. And then here again, uh, bagged materials, right? Bagged materials. So we have this here, the bagged materials is this little bag with all the green things in it. Uh, whenever you fail to pick up materials before the wave ends, the remaining materials on the map, they do not disappear. They are collected and put into a bag. And then on the next wave or later wave, when you drop a material, you get one extra material from the bag plus the one you picked up. So basically you never lose materials unless let's say you're wave 19, right before the final wave and you leave a thousand materials on the ground well in this case you're going to lose it because you know wave 20 is the last wave assuming you're not playing on endless which i will not be going into depth on endless mode because i don't want to uh, talk about something which i don't personally do i never play endless mode so yeah and then yeah moving on again the bag materials mean that no materials are lost you just collect them on the next wave unless of course like i said wave 19 to wave 20 there's no nothing past wave 20 uh, unless you go endless, so you would lose those. And again here, there is a limit of 50 materials that can be on the map at once. If more than 50 materials would drop on the ground, the new material is added to the value of one that's already on the ground. So basically, you could stand in the middle of the map, clear the entire wave, drop 400 materials. It would still only be 50 on the ground. And that's because they get added to each other. I believe this is just uh, for efficiency purposes, right? It also makes it easier to pick them up though, of course. And you don't lose any value or materials. So even if you don't pick them up, don't worry, they will get bagged. 
and you don't lose anything. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, for materials, when killed, enemies have a chance to drop materials. The base chance is 100%. And then there's a lot of numbers and everything we can get into. I don't think it's too important. We can look at it very briefly though here, right? You see, we started at 100%. So the early waves always drop materials. Every monster drops materials and it goes down to 70% by the final wave, okay? And then all this other extra information I think is not necessary. Uh, it's just really in depth and you don't need to know that for playing the game properly, okay? And then here we are. This is the main part of the video. This is where we're looking at the monster wiki. So we can look and learn all the monsters, different names and sort of their specialties, okay? And to start here, the hit points, damage and speed of enemies along with types of enemies that spawns are influenced by the difficulty settings, which we started with, right? So different sort of different enemies will spawn on different difficulties. Of course, on difficulty level five, the highest difficulty, all of these enemies will spawn, okay? And that's what we're talking about today. And then here, again, moving on, Ed endless mode we're not going to talk about, but yeah. Some enemies spawn with a random movement speed, for example, a baby alien, the base and first enemy you find, a baby alien can spawn with a movement speed between two and 300. And this also applies to some other ones, right? And then as for reference, your own base speed is 450, assuming there's no, nothing in the traits or anything that's influencing your base speed when you start the match. For example, well rounded gets 5% bonus speed as part of his trait, so he obviously starts with more than this. And then moving on again, all enemies start with their base health, which you can see in the chart here, and it increases as the waves go on, depending on which enemy it is. So for example, the tree, <laughs> the tree, which can drop fruit or a crate, right? Crate chance 20%. So every five trees that you break, you have a, you know, every five trees you break, you should get one crate on average. And then the health of these trees starts at 10 on wave one and increases by five each wave, right? And then, yeah, and this applies to all the enemies. And then here we have the enemy maximum. This is really important. Um, you will see in my well-rounded run, I have no issues clearing all the waves. I have a ton of damage on my run. Uh, yeah, no issues clearing waves, kill all the enemies before the next set of enemy spawns, every single wave. However, if you do not have enough damage, there is a little bit of an issue. And that is waves have a maximum of 100 enemies that can be on screen at once. And so what does that mean? If this number is exceeded, a random enemy that is not a boss or elite will get despawned. So you lose all the materials from the despawned enemies. And the only exception again is the pacifist, which is a specific character I'll talk about later. Um, another thing you can note is despawn enemies do trigger items on death or like on kill items such as these, which we can also talk about during our runs. Um, but yeah, these basically deal damage when the enemy dies, they have a certain effect that deals damage. And so despawn enemies will also trigger these. But pretty much the main point here is you want to keep in mind that if enemies despawn, meaning if you don't have enough damage to clear the waves consistently, you're losing out on materials which is pretty much money and experience, right, in this game. So losing materials is really detrimental to your strength and your ability to get stronger, right? Because it's kind of exponential. The more materials you get, the stronger you can get, the more materials you can get. And it's kind of like a little cycle, right? So you want to make sure you have a lot of damage and you're clearing waves consistently. Okay. And here we have the enemies, my very little chart. I love seeing these little pictures and yeah. The first one is the tree. Of course, the tree is not aggressive, doesn't deal damage, it doesn't move. It simply spawns in and it drops three materials, which is important to note early game because it drops more than, as you can see, most of the enemies, most of these base enemies at least. And it also has a 20% chance to drop a loot crate, which is great, right? You love free stuff. Who doesn't love free stuff? So you always want to make sure you're clearing out the trees on most characters. There are exceptions. But um, pretty much every character, except for those few exceptions, you want to be clearing trees, get your loot crates, guys. Okay. And then the first enemy we have here is the baby alien. It's very simple, chases you, deals damage, a little bit tanky, has a somewhat high HP plus, you know, wave. And then, you know, 
fairly slow speed, I would say. It drops one material. And then moving on, next, the chaser. These come in little like packs, right? They come in packs. They move similarly to the baby aliens. They simply chase you, they go towards you, deal damage when they touch you. They're very squishy though. Very squishy, as you can see here. They have one base HP, which only increases by one per wave. So they only ever get up to 20 HP max, which is not very high. And then they also drop one material. The spitter, as you can see, it's kind of cute actually. Look at the little little tongue sticking out stuff in the eyes. It's kind of silly. But uh, this one, it runs away if you get too close to it, and otherwise it shoots projectiles every few seconds. It's a little bit tanky, right? Eight base health, plus one growth, and one material. And then these can hurt though. These can definitely hurt. So you want to be careful around these spitters. And then the charger, this is where things get dangerous, right? These start spawning on wave three. And yeah, here's the first wave where these enemies spawn. So spitters on wave four, right? Chaser two, uh, charger three. And chargers deal pretty big damage and tend to be quite tanky. Uh, as you can see, they have increasing damage, right? They have, Their damage ramps up a bit more than the others here. And they pretty much just dash at you. Um, and you can see here, they have a little cooldown, 2.5 to 3.5 seconds. Also, they just chase you unless they're charging. Pursuer. This is pretty much like the big boy, big boy chaser, right? Um, they're very tanky, as you can see here. And then the, the speed ramps up significantly. They start out as the slowest enemy nearly out of all of these, but they ramp up to 600 move speed, which is much higher than your base speed of 450, you saw here. So if you leave them alive too long, or if you don't have knockback, or you know for whatever reason, they can catch up to you and they will kill you. So you have to make sure you have enough damage to deal with these, right? In the first wave, important to note, they spawn is 11. So they actually get 250 as their base HP. Because 10 plus, you know, this is wave 1. And then plus 24 per wave. At wave 11, they have 250 health. They're quite tanky. They're quite fast if you do not kill them in time. So this is why you want to have enough damage by wave 11. To make sure you're able to clear the pursuers and not get killed. Okay? Next one is the Bruiser. Bruiser, wave eight spawn. It's actually less tanky than the Pursuer. If you see here, 20 base health. So they are a little tanky to start out with, plus 11 per wave. And this just means they start out with 11 times seven, 77, about 100 health, right? 97 health. And they also do heavy damage, similar to chargers. They have a cooldown on when they can charge at you. Otherwise, they just chase you. But, you know, out of all these enemies, right, Pursuer, Bruiser, Charger, Chaser, Baby Alien, they all chase you. However, these two can also charge, and then the Spitter just shoots projectiles. Moving on again, the Buffer, this little ugly guy <laughs> with all these, like, mushroom or, like, warts on him, all over him. He stays really far away from you. However, he has really slow move speed. He's one-third of your base move speed. Uh, assuming you don't have move speed in your trait. And he buffs enemies. He gives them 150% health, increased damage by 25%, and increased speed. And it's really obvious because the enemies are red. You can see this again in my well-rounded video where I see these for the first time on wave 16. They are very squishy though, right? So very squishy, easy to kill. However, they make other enemies much harder to kill, right? Because if, let's say, they buff a Pursuer, gets 150 bonus health, which is a lot. So you want to kill these, make sure they don't go around buffing things nonstop. Okay, and next enemy is the fly. The fly is this one. It looks like a sort of floating elephant head, kind of. That's what I think. It looks like a trunk and then like an elephant head to me. Um, basically, it moves around you. And if you shoot it with projectiles, it gets hit with projectiles. It starts firing projectiles randomly. So every time you shoot it, for example, with the SMG, as you can see in the background, rotator holding SMGs, each shot from the SMG will make it sort of fire a projectile. So you just want to be careful not to, you know, accidentally walk into those projectiles. You know, yeah, that's all. And play, uh, stage here. Wait. Oh yeah, difficulty one, right? So this is what this means. These start spawning on difficulty one, and they spawn on wave four. And the next one is the healer. So he's a little guy. He's kind of cute. 
little funny looking eyes holding a bone in his mouth and he pretty much just moves around randomly throughout the map and he heals his enemies or is he, well the enemies so he's like a healer right healer obviously heals the enemies which increases from 100 base increases by 10 per wave and yeah you just want to take him out make sure he's not non-stop healing the enemies that's not good for you you want everything to die on the on the screen and then yeah moving on also yeah sorry difficulty one so he doesn't spawn until difficulty one and then looter maybe my favorite enemy aside from the tree uh he pretty much just runs around the map but he always drops a loot crate on kill a hundred percent chance to drop a loot crate that is incredible right so you always want to make sure you're trying to focus these down if it doesn't put you in danger if it puts you in danger do not chase the looter this will kill you <laughs> if you don't have the damage don't have the, the speed you're low hp or something do not do not I repeat do not chase the looter he's very tanky i think it is the tankiest unit in the game aside from maybe one of these down here uh definitely the tankiest neutral enemy that doesn't hit you but if you walk into him it will actually damage you so yeah looter very cute nice little emeralds on his back drops loot you want to kill him if possible next is the helmet alien these on difficulty four and above spawn on wave four starting wave four and it's pretty much just a chaser it's just like a chaser or a baby alien a helmet alien just like these uh these little guys up here he just walks around chasing you and deals damage on touch very simple okay he's just a little bit tankier than the others and then the fin alien this one also very similar it's like the big brother of the chaser here Fin alien has a bit more health also deals more damage and only spawns on difficulty one or higher yeah okay also has a higher chance to drop consumables as you can see here and moving on again the spawner this spawns three junky aliens on death it doesn't actually do anything on its own it's also incredibly squishy right 10 base health only one increase per wave so on wave 20 it only has 30 base health or 30 max health basically yeah super super squishy super slow uh, pretty much it's just there if you shoot it it spawns three of these little guys and these guys are the ones that can be dangerous if you let too many of them spawn basically if you're non-stop killing spawners but you're not clearing the junkies they will just continually move around the map shooting projectiles near you which can be really troublesome because they can cut off a lot of your movement if you're not careful okay then moving on again horn bruiser this is basically just the big brother of the bruiser horn bruiser bruiser has better stats only spawns on difficulty one starting on wave eight or higher and also has the same charge cooldown as the others and same thing for the horn charger basically just a big version of the regular charger so you know charger horn charger bruiser horn bruiser okay and as you can see as well the horn charger only spawns on difficulty or sorry on wave 18 unless you're on difficulty 4 or higher and it spawns on wave 5 it spawns much earlier when you get to higher difficulties and then we're getting near the end here the slasher egg which spawns slasher after five seconds unless you kill it so generally speaking you want to kill the slasher egg however i will make a note that if you have the damage i actually think letting the slasher spawn is good and let me explain because the slasher egg does not drop materials zero materials zero loot however the slasher drops three materials or sorry it goes from one to three right this is obviously significantly harder to kill the slasher egg only has five base health three per plus three per wave and it starts spawning on wave seven on difficulty one or higher so basically wave seven right six times three eighteen it only has 23 health total however the slasher on the other hand uh right as you can see here has a lot higher base health 10 times base health base health and also uh pretty much eight times the health growth so it's way tankier but if you have enough damage like i do in my well-rounded video you can let the eggs spawn and then kill the slashers to get more materials that's a bit of a little trick high level trick i guess and then the tentacle finally only two left here 
tentacle enemy. This one pretty much just follows near you at a set distance. And then if you run away, it chases you. If you run towards it, it runs away. Uh, so it's just, you know, it likes to try to maintain that distance from you. And it just shoots out sort of two little red lines, which you will see in the game. Two red lines in a sort of V shape which can damage you if you walk into them. So it does a good job at cutting off your pathing and blocking your exit, you know? So this is a, a tanky enemy, a little bit dangerous. You want to make sure you obviously have enough damage to clear all of these threats. And these, like I said, yeah, very tanky. Only spawn on difficulty three, starting at wave 13. Or sorry, difficulty three or higher, of course. Um, these are all inherited on a higher difficulties. So anything that can spawn, start spawning on difficulty one will be on difficulty five. And on difficulty five, every single one of these enemies will spawn on the waves where they do start spawning, right? Finally, we have the Lamprey, not, you know, excluding the elites. We have the Lamprey as the final normal enemy, you could say. And it only spawns when you have bait. And this item basically just gives you 8% damage. And then it spawns a few Lampreys on the, the wave that you bought it from the shop. And these enemies are pretty dangerous if you don't have the damage. Um, they are quite tanky. So let's say you buy a bait on a very early round. Well, they have base 30 health uh, and 15 health growth per wave. So these can be very dangerous. Uh, so you definitely don't want to take this if you're lacking damage. Because they will follow you. They have an even shorter charge cooldown than all the other enemies, which are all 2.5 to 3.5. This one has a charge cooldown of 1.5. So they will chase you and they will non-stop charge at you while also shooting projectiles to try and cut off your path. So these, yeah, very dangerous. Be careful buying bait if you're not strong enough. And finally, we make it to the elites. I'm not gonna talk too much about their stats or their waves. However, I will talk about their abilities a little bit plus their names. So here we have the Rhino. You can kind of guess what he does. He's a Rhino, he charges every two seconds and then he shoots little projectiles out behind him in a sort of V shape as he charges. So basically, if you try to dodge, he'll shoot projectiles to his side where he just charged through. So he has a chance to hit you, right? So you wanna be careful with him. You can easily sort of move through the projectiles though. You will see this in my runs during my series. And then moving on, the Butcher. This one is interesting. They all have sort of, um, as you can see, mutations once they get to certain health. So the Rhino just gets more aggressive with his charging, lower cooldown, and he also shoots projectiles a bit more in a different pattern, which can be more dangerous. Yeah, because you can't really move through the projectiles once he starts doing this. There are specific ways to, I think, to move, which make it easy to avoid. However, this is hard to show without actually seeing me play the game or without seeing gameplay. So like I said, we will encounter all of these enemies during our, uh, yeah, during our series. And then the Butcher, Butcher, he slashes four times, basically around where you are every 1.25 seconds. And then when he mutates, slashes eight times every second. And the pattern becomes random, a lot more random in a big area. So he pretty much just like throws a bunch of like slashes near you and you just have to dodge. And then when he mutates again, he does less slashes. However, they are more quick, a lot faster. So we would just like nonstop slash towards your where you're standing. Yeah, this is the butcher. And moving on, we have the monk. Okay, very interesting looking thing. Kind of has like six arms, which like covering its eyes and then like sort of doing a little pee, like peaceful pose, I guess. I'm not sure. But he spawns at mutation zero. He spawns 15 eggs within 10 seconds. So you want to just basically follow his trail because you'll leave them in his trail and just clear all of the eggs, right? And then when he mutates after he drops all the eggs, he starts shooting projectiles towards you. Pretty much five in a little arc shape towards you. And you just want to sort of either stay at a distance or dodge in between by moving in between the projectiles wherever there's a space. And then finally, his second mutation in the last or in the last 10 seconds, he runs away from you and he spawns tentacles and then goes back to mutation one. And the tentacles are these, right? So he'll spawn these tentacles. Basically, he's, he's a boss that likes to spawn things, right? Spawns a lot of tentacles, spawns a lot of slasher eggs, and shoots projectiles and tries to run away from you. And then moving on, we have the croc, crocodile. Uh, 
I think is a pretty fitting name with these teeth. And it, he's a little simple. Mutation zero. So when he starts out, he just charges and he puts two slashes around himself to try and hit you. And then when he mutates, charges, and he makes a circle of projectiles around you. So instead of putting two slashes near himself, he'll put a circle of red, you know, red dot projectiles around you. And you have to stay within the circle. Unless you have really high move speed, then you can move out of it. But uh, basically, you have to move inside the circle to dodge his charge. Yeah. Colossus, our friend here with a bunch of eyes, eight sets, of, or sorry, four sets of eyes, eight eyes total. Um, he pretty much just chases you nonstop. Of course, you can see here he only has 300 move speed, so he's not super dangerous. However, he will chase you nonstop, and he spawns 50 moving projectiles in a big area near himself. So uh, I actually do fight this in my well-rounded video, Colossus. And there's kind of two ways you can deal with it. One is being really far away. Two is just dodging. <laughs> uh, this may be difficult for some people, but I promise the more you play it, the easier it will get. And then moving on, his mutation, random walk pattern. So he starts moving everywhere, pretty much just around the map randomly. And then he'll spawn every 0.5 seconds he spawns projectiles around you that sort of chase you or like move in your direction. So if he's in the center and you're top left, then he'll spawn circles around you, which move away from him. So it's like you can basically move through the circle each time and then just like sort of stay at an equal distance from him, firing at him. Yeah. And then the Mantis, of course, also a very fitting name here. The Mantis here, he chases you and he slashes around himself every 1.25 seconds. And then his second or his mutation still chases you. However, he'll charge. He starts charging after he mutates and then also slashes around himself. And yeah, that's the mute mantis. Very simple. Then we have the mother. This one, I think is actually quite easy to play against. Um, but basically starting out, it shoots four slashes moving away from itself every 1.45, 1.4 seconds. And the thing with the slashes is there's a small space in between the mother and the slashes once they move all the way out where you can stand. So basically you can kind of just move in a circle around the mother and never get hit as long as you're not walking into her. And the slashes will just keep moving away from you. However, we do have the mutation where she starts running away. And this is when she starts randomly throwing slashes at you, double slashes every 0.65 seconds in a random pattern. And then she also spawns a bunch of little packs every few seconds. And then the final boss, that is not the, well, sorry, not the final boss, the final mini boss, final elite, is the Gargoyle. Gargoyle, I think they just recently changed him, this, this patch, a few days ago. Um, but pretty much, he spawns a big circle of projectiles around himself. And then after mutating, he chases you, spawning projectiles again in a random pattern. And mutates again, shooting projectiles in random directions really quickly, really, really quickly. So he just has a lot of projectiles. That's his thing, right? The gargoyle. And finally, we have the bosses. Okay, these are the final bosses. On difficulty five, you will have to fight them both every single run. And you can see here, they actually have more health and more damage on difficulty five than they do on other difficulties. And yeah, basically the predator is a bit dangerous. They're both dangerous, obviously. But usually once you get to wave 20, you should be strong enough to clear these without any issue. So yeah, the Predator, he chases you and he'll dash. And then he pretty much has two abilities. One, he has this sort of counterclockwise moving projectile that stays connected to him. But there are small spaces in between where you can move through. However, you do have to be careful with the dash, right, of course. And then once he mutates, he no longer dashes. However, he starts shooting out projectiles at you. So... He basically gets scared, he starts moving away or whatever, he doesn't dash, he just starts shooting projectiles. And then we have, yeah, that was the Predator. Finally, we have the Invoker, the final boss. One of the final bosses, of course, these are both final bosses. And the, the Invoker, sorry, every two seconds, he makes projectiles that spawn around you. And it's basically just makes a circle around you. And then for Mutation 1, more projectiles in a wider area. And Mutation 2, he starts running really fast all around everywhere. 
and then he pretty much just keeps spawning non-stop circles of projectiles around you trying to like limit or restrict your movement and that is the two bosses okay that is it i will say we also have this here right 20 ways in total this has the timers if you would like to see them first wave right very short the final wave 90 seconds uh, and then we have all these waves in between which are 60 and these waves which sort of amp up by five seconds each wave okay and then that's it that is everything you need to know about Brotato. i don't think that starting out you really need to know anything else but i will say i will be using the official names for all the characters during the video so i hope you can maybe remember i will be pointing them out though of course uh during my runs so there won't be too much confusion hopefully okay hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you guys also watch my series on how to play all the different characters all right uh thank you for watching if you have any questions leave a comment and let me know and if you like the video like the video that's all thank you goodbye